Okay, kids, I'm back out here going to do another video on the Dave Catton um, CNC build. Uh, today I'm going to be working on assembling the Z axis box assembly. So I've got my assembly drawings for that right here. And I, you can see I've just got, got everything just set here. Just kind of checking the fit, making sure everything is right. I've already off camera cut uh, a couple of angles and I have laid out the holes per the print there, uh, drilled them and also uh, put a countersink in them. And what I'm going to use to attach these, I've got these uh, number 10 inch and a quarter wood screws and so that's what I've made the uh, countersink for. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to have to do is I have not yet uh, you can see all the, the little divots there where I'm marking the hole locations. I have not yet drilled the pilot holes uh, for the screws, so I will uh, go ahead and do that first to all the parts and then we'll get this thing assembled. Okay, I'm back and I've got my pilot holes drilled for the wood screws in the front, the two sides, and also the top piece. So I'm almost ready to start screwing this thing together, but there is a couple of other things I need to do before I start clamping this together and, and start shooting screws in. And one of those is, as you know, these four hole or four sets of holes here are for mounting the router mount. And I use a quarter 20 machine screw or a bolt or whatever, whichever you want to use. So I need to... Uh, drive in these quarter 20 uh, T-nuts from this back side. And like I said, when I run these run these uh, parts, I put a 5 16 hole, which should be just the right size for a quarter 20. So I'll go ahead and knock these in real quick. Okay, one other thing I need to do before I uh, start screwing this thing together is I've drilled these holes out. Uh, you know, again, I put the little uh, tick marks there where you can drill a pilot hole. You could set your stepper motor on there. Use four wood screws if you wanted to. I, however, like to use uh, T-nuts with just regular uh, 1024 screws. They work well with the NEMA 23 stepper motors. So I've actually drilled these out to a quarter inch uh, diameter hole and that will accept these little 1024 T-nuts. Now when I put these in here, these ones on the back are not going to be in the way of anything. But when I put when I put these other ones on, and let me go ahead and hammer all these in and then I'll uh, tell you what the problem is. Okay, so now when you set this on top, it'll set on here like this. You can see that these two right here, you know, the T-nut sticks out a little bit. They, they're going to create a problem. So one thing you could do is you could take a, uh, you know, some kind of a sander and maybe sand yourself a little notch right there. Another thing you could do is before you hammer these in, and again, it looks like I'm going to have to get a 1024 screw and pull these back out. You can take a Forstner bit and actually try to uh, drill a little bit of a, a pocket there where these will set down in and then they won't then they won't be in the way when you, when you connect this here because this is going to set right like this so I think I'm going to find a uh, 1024 screw and pull these back out and uh, try the Forstner bit method okay so now I've got the I took my Forstner bit and made a little pocket here on these front two, uh, just enough to get it flush with the surface. And now it will set on here and I'll be able to get this thing screwed up uh, without any inter interference from those uh, little T-nuts, uh, 1024 T-nuts. So let me grab a couple of clamps and we'll start clamping this thing up and screwing it together.
Okay, I got a couple of 12-inch uh, clamps, and I just kind of hung this over my little uh, outfeed table here, and I've got a 2 before right here that I can uh, clamp this to. So it's got everything held down, and like I said, I, I drilled my pilot holes here. I used like a 149, uh, but so that I don't split out the part going into the, the I guess, the end grain or the side or whatever you want to call it where the plies are. I used a uh, 330 seconds or a .09375 uh, uh, drill bit to go down just a little bit to give this thing something to uh, to catch a little bit so it doesn't split when I screw this in. So now I can go ahead and start screwing these in. And this is probably going to take a minute here. Okay, I've got the uh, two sides, the bottom and the front all attached together. I can remove these clamps now. Yeah, that, that worked out pretty good. One thing I will add too is if you see right here, this bottom piece has that pocket for that bearing. I did go ahead and press that in before I tried to attach this. Uh, it's not like you can't get to it if you screw it on there and forget to put the bearing in but it's a lot easier if you do it beforehand so now i've just got to attach this top here and i'm probably going to take this little uh 330 seconds drill bit and drill me a little bit of a pilot hole on the end of that, on the end of that plywood. So we'll see if we can get one of these screws in here without it shifting a whole lot. Another thing I want to add about that uh, bearing down below that I was talking about, with the different tolerances in plywood and you know all that kind of stuff, the different thicknesses, you may or may not when you get this piece attached and you put all this together with your uh, z-axis front plate you've got three things that have to line up uh, pretty accurately and that is the motor and then it has to be concentric with the little acme nut block that will go on the z plate and of course the third thing is down here in the bottom where the lead screw goes in that little bearing to capture it if when you're putting this thing together and i'll probably mention this again when i'm putting the lead screw in just so uh you know everybody understands if you get that off even just a few thou it can be the difference of it running smooth and not running smooth so what i would recommend is if you get it and you try to put it in there and you have to move that lead screw so much to get it in there and now it's in a bind is to do one of two things either cut the lead screw a little shorter and don't even put it in there just leave it hang or put a spacer block on your motor and step it up a little bit i actually did that on the uh the big green beast in there it uh it went in there but it was a it was a little tight and i didn't like it so all i did was uh add a spacer block and raise it up a little bit higher and it doesn't even it doesn't even touch that bearing and you know it works fine without it I just kind of put it on there as an added plus but if uh, you know if you get it off a little bit it's not going to work right so you may want to uh, you know may, may want to not even use that okay so I'm finishing up here got the uh, top all put on and again you know you just try to use some clamps if you got them to help keep it flush put them on a flush surface do the best you can keeping it flush and there's our box and as you can see those uh, little T nuts that I was talking about earlier how they have to be recessed in there for them to work and also you'll want to remember that when you're fastening your motor your screws can be a little longer on these back two, but on these front two, because they're so close to there, the, the screw will actually hit the inside of this front piece. So you need to make sure your screw length matches up whatever all that adds up to, whether you put a spacer block, the thickness of the flange on a stepper motor, 
and then you know about five eighths or so there so you're getting enough threads in there so just be cognizant of that uh, and now I guess we're ready to attach our angle and again these are drilled uh, they're not perfectly symmetrical because I just kind of laid them out by hand but uh, they're basically the same 16 and 3 quarter inches long with uh, a hole on 3 eighths from each end and then uh, I think the hole spacing was uh, 2 and whatever it was 2 and 21 30 seconds that's what it was so okay so I'm just going to try to flush this up. You can flush it up with the bottom or top if you know either way. It should should match, but I mean if you're off a little bit, just pick one and flush them up that way. And then you can uh, take a pencil and mark the hole locations. And then use a little tiny bit just to get one started okay and we'll go on there just like so and I'm going to use this little bit as a little pilot hole First, I think I'm going to try to clamp this on here just to make sure that bit doesn't try to walk too much on me. And again, you want to line this back edge up of this angle with the back edge of your side piece here. So, there we go. I'll go ahead and put a couple in just to help hold that angle in place. Okay, so there I've got one side done and it's nice and flush with this back piece. Nice, lays nice and flat on the table. So now I'll just uh, put this other piece on and I'll be back in a minute. Okay guys, that's going to do it for the Z-axis box assembly. Uh, I just want to uh, point out to some of you guys that may be building from this kit that to remember this is all about having fun. Uh, you know, so if you get a hole off a little bit or something, don't stress out. Remember, you're just building a plywood CNC. It's not, uh, you know, it's not NASA space shuttle parts or anything like that. So don't stress out if you get something a little bit off. It will still work fine, I can assure you. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. And i got to apologize for the crappy audio, probably for about the first half of this video. I've been playing around with this lavalier mic, and the whole time I didn't have the plug pushed all the way in in the camera. And I didn't realize it until about halfway through. So hopefully the audio was a little better. I know uh, as I kind of previewed some of the video I shot on my laptop back there, uh, I guess I was using the mic built into the camera and it of course picked up the uh, air conditioner back there a lot uh, a lot more prevalent so I apologize for that if only shooting these videos was as easy as building a CNC I'd be I'd be a whole lot better at it so anyway thanks for watching guys thanks for all my new subscribers and we'll talk to you next time take care